story tonight, a fire at a PG&E Tesla-powered energy storage facility in Moss Landing. We are getting our first look at what the fire looked like when it broke out last night. Fire led to a shelter-in-place order and forced the closure of Highway 1 through Moss Landing. That order still in effect tonight. We have live team coverage. Action News 8 reporter Ariana Hasso follow, following the impact on traffic. We begin uh, from the scene, though, with Action News 8 reporter Felix Cortez with our top story. Felix? Well, Dan, Aaron, the PG&E energy storage facility behind me, according to PG&E, is capable of storing enough energy to power more than a quarter million homes for up to four hours. It's now shut down indefinitely because of a battery fire. The sirens at the former Moss Landing power plant started blaring early Tuesday morning, a warning to all in Moss Landing. We were told eventually that there was a problem at the powerhouse and that uh, we received word that we should shelter in place. So we thought, well, okay, we'll heed the advice and we'll stay put. It was a fire at the PG&E battery storage facility where a Tesla mega pack was destroyed by fire. Cause unknown, no injuries reported. The fire starting around 1.30 Tuesday morning. With our training, when a battery gets involved, we are directed to not actively extinguish that fire. We are to let that battery burn and um, protect the exposures around. The mega battery, one of 256 Tesla batteries at the PG&E plant, eventually burned out five hours later. But it continued to smolder, raising concerns the lithium-ion batteries might be releasing toxins into the air. A shelter-in-place order was issued for Moss Landing. Highway 1 through the area was shut down. Businesses and storefronts never allowed to open. It's kind of quiet, you know, I mean... It's usually pretty busy here at uh, Moss Landing Boat Works, but uh, today, you know, because of this this battery situation, everybody just shelter in place, and then they sent the employees home. By late afternoon, as first responders waited for EPA technicians to test the air quality, many started venturing out, including these vacationers staying at an RV park just across from the power plant. A fire scare wasn't going to ruin their vacation. No way. Yeah. No. We have plenty of food and plenty of libations, correct? Yeah. <laughs> so we are going to keep We're ourselves okay. going. Games having a great time. We're good, uh, boy and yeah, having a good vacation. Boy and girl scouts, we travel prepared. Yes. <laughs> Now, this is the third battery fire here at the former Moss Landing power plant. There have been two fires at the Vistra Energy Storage Facility since it opened roughly two years ago. Firefighters say they will now work with PG&E on an after-action report, try to determine what happened and how they can learn from this latest fire. Reporting from Moss Landing, I'm Felix Cortez, KSBW, Action News 8. All right, thank you very much, Felix. Felix, thank you. Obviously, a significant impact when it comes to traffic. Highway 1 shut down. On the left, you are looking at traffic on Highway 1 and Malera Road. This is the uh, south end of the closure. Then on the right side, that's Highway 1 and Salinas Road. Drivers trying to leave Santa Cruz County have been backing up onto Highway 1 at that exit. Just a, you know, traffic nightmare. It's a mess. Action News 8 reporter Ariana Hasso is live at Highway 1 and Jensen Road, the north side of that closure. Ari, where do we stand now? Yeah, Dan, Aaron, Highway 1 has been closed since early this morning. Like you said, we're on Jensen Road and Highway 1, which is where the closure begins. As you can see, there are crews out here. They've been redirecting traffic towards Watsonville, turning cars around. Now, I'm going to step aside just so you can get a better view of everything, but Highway 1 was first closed around 6 a.m. and around 7.30 this morning, CHP reported that it would be closed for four to six hours. Then around 1.30 this afternoon, they extended the closure due to air quality concerns with no estimated time for reopening. Now, just a little bit ago, right before the show started, I checked back in with CHP and they say they're still waiting on the Environmental Protection Agency to finish testing the air quality and give them the green light to reopen. Now, we will continue monitoring this and bring you updates as we learn them and have more for you tonight at 11.
We're live in Moss Landing. Ariana Hasso, KSBW Action News 8. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. We've posted a map of the sheltered place order. It's on our website at ksbw.com. I ask all th three of you to comment on. So this is today's Wall Street Journal. California's Tesla battery fire. Editorial in today's Wall Street Journal. Um, it explains that Tuesday, two days ago, a Tesla battery at a utility storage site caught fire. It triggered the shutdown of the state's scenic coastal highway in California and had warnings to local residents to shelter in place, told them not to use air purification, not to do the uh, air systems, air conditioning, and what other. It goes on to say that lithium ion battery fires are notoriously hard to extinguish because they burn at extremely high temperatures and they produce dangerous fumes. So I'd like each of you to discuss some of the public safety concerns associated with using lithium ion batteries for energy storage. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, so ultimately, the flammable properties of lithium ion batteries uh, are due to the, the high power density, and you don't need to use those for grid scale storage necessarily. The reason we use them is because they're quite cheap, because we've scaled them up for electric vehicles and for consumer electronics. Um, I think it's really important that we begin to find ways to lower the cost of alternative sources, at least for grid-scale storage, that's helpful for um, large-scale deployment. It's also helpful for um, you know, increasing grid reliability and reducing our uh, reliance on other countries. Thank you, Ed. Mr. Wiley. Yeah, to, to further Mr. Nelson's comments, uh, when, when we started the process of designing the, the battery chemistry that we're developing, iron air, uh, we looked closely at you know, over 100 different chemistries and one of the criteria was safety. Uh, in, in particular, uh, not using any flammable materials uh, and then developing a chemical reaction that doesn't have any pathway to thermal runaway where the reaction itself is self-heating. So these batteries that we're developing are water-based. Uh, they have a, a salt in the water, which is a, an alkaline salt. Uh, and there is no pathway to thermal runaway. And in fact, it is not flammable. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to submit to the record, without objection, this uh, California Tesla battery fire article from the Wall Street Journal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr.